My name is Desmond Miles, and I'm a prisoner of war. A war I never knew existed, waged by two groups I never thought were real. Templars and assassins. The Animus showed me the truth. The things I've seen, the things I've been. A thousand years of history flowing through my veins, brought to life by this machine. They're using it. Using me to search for something. Call it the Apple. It's an artifact. One of many so-called pieces of Eden. The Templars collect them. It's how they stay in power. And if the Templars get their hands on another one, everything will change. They want to make us all their slaves. When they first brought me here, I was afraid of what would happen if I tried to fight back. Now? Now I'm afraid of what will happen if I don't. But I can't do it alone. And maybe I don't have to. I met someone. Her name is Lucy. I think she's on my side. She's gone now. She was taken away by that bastard Warren Vidic and his Templar masters. I don't know what will happen to her, or what'll happen to me. All I know is I need to get out of here. And I need to do it soon. My name is Desmond Miles, and this is my story. We have to go. Lucy, where have you been? Why did they- Now. Desmond? Get in. What's with the blood? Are you okay? Look, we have maybe ten minutes, maybe, before they figure out what I've done. If we're not out of here and on the road before then... Wait, we're leaving? Desmond, I promise I'll answer all of your questions. Later. But right now, I need you to just shut up and do what I say. So please, get in the Animus. All right. Hurry up! Oh, my love. Mi dispiace. I, I was at the bank when they told me. Did I miss it? Am I too late? Give him here. Giovanni. Shh, my love. It will be all right. Tu sei un auditore. Sei un combattente. Perciò, combatti. Listen to him. A fine set of lungs. And what shall we call him, my love? Ezio. Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Get up. Let's go. Yeah, well, I'm gonna need a second. There isn't time, Desmond. We have to leave. Come on, Desmond! Oh, really getting out of here, huh? Stay close. Nice walls. Fancy. 
We need to move. I'm coming, I'm coming. Hey, you're not supposed to be up here. Open this door. I'm calling it in. We have a breach in the research wing. I repeat, Wait up. there's been a breach in the research wing. Desmond, over Requesting here. backup from all available security personnel. Subjects appear to be armed. Hurry up! There they are! Don't let them get away! <laughs> Holy shit! Come on, we need to keep moving. Look at this place. Come on, Desmond, let's go. What about the cameras? I rigged them to loop old footage. How do you think I managed to hide all your nighttime snooping from Abstergo? You're good. So I've been told. But they're on to us now. We need to hurry. Careful. We need to get to that elevator on the other side of the room. Follow my lead, but keep an eye out for security. I'd rather avoid a fight. Boy, these must be a bitch to clean. Do you want us to get caught? Is that an animus? Stay close. What the? How many of them are there? Stay close. Is it animuses or Stay animi? back. What do you think, Lucy? Lucy? they need with all of them. Desmond, shut the fuck up. Please. Fuck. I thought this card would work. It must be on a separate system and I don't have the code. Wait. Shit. Come on. How did you do that? I don't know. Let's go. It's always something. What was that in the Animus? Subject 16? Ezio, Audi, Audi something? I think we've been wrong all along. That's why we need to get out of here. Vidic and the Templars, they're only part of the problem. What do you mean? I'll explain when we get there. Get where? Ah! 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 
Get in. You're joking. It's for your own protection. Oh, man. We're almost there. Thanks for that. It was great. Shoving the trunk, bouncing around. Loved this it. way. So, gonna tell me what's going on now? There was a reason for the escape, Desmond. Figures. We need your help. For what? Another treasure hunt through time? Abstergo's gonna replace their Apple of Eden. The map your ancestor found guarantees it. The other assassins, they'll do what they can, where they can, but... What? What is it? We're losing this war, Desmond. The Templars are too powerful. And every day, more of us die. I still don't see how I fit into things. We're going to train you. Turn you into one of us. What? No. No, you've seen me in action. I'm no good at this, and even if I was, it would take months. Years, even. No. Not with the Animus. Not with the bleeding effect. But I'm just one guy. Sometimes, that's all you need. So that's why you found him. My ancestor. What was his name? Ezio? If you can follow in his footsteps, you'll learn everything he did, just like he did. Years of training, absorbed in a matter of days. You broke me out of Abstergo and brought me here just to make me an assassin? Look, there's more to it than that, but it'll have to wait. Trust me, okay? All right, I'm in. Tell me what you need. Really? You're sure? I thought you'd be happy about this. Sorry, I'm just a little surprised. I spent the whole ride over here figuring out how I was going to convince you to do this. Save it. After what those Templar bastards put me through, I'm ready, willing, and able. Thank you. Lucy! You made it! God, it's been so long. Seven years. Can you believe it? Indeed. Welcome back. Ah, so this must be the infamous Subject 17. Desmond Miles, was it? Who are you? I'm sorry, where are my manners? I'm Sean Hastings. This is Rebecca Crane. Nice to meet you, Desmond. Right, well, it's been lovely chatting, but if you don't mind, Desmond, it's best we get straight to work. Time is precious. Doubly so these days. We've got everything set up and ready, Lucy. Just say the word and we'll get going. Here, I brought you something. A parting gift from Abstergo. Whoa! The memory core! This is amazing! With their data, things are gonna go a lot faster. I'll get to work on merging the code. Hey, listen. I just wanted to say thank you. And that uh, I'm sorry. Sorry? Yeah, you know, before. Everything at Abstergo. It was just... I wasn't ready. It's okay. No. Going through all that. Knowing that the Templars still exist. What they're planning. What's done is done, Desmond. You're here now, and that's what matters. Hey, Desmond. What's up? Just wondering what your role is in all this. I take care of Baby. It's my job to keep her up and running. Baby? You mean the Animus? Actually, I prefer Animus 2.0, since Baby's twice as awesome as anything you'll find at Abstergo. The Templars might have deeper pockets than us, but they've got no ambition, no passion, no competitive edge. That's why, even with all their resources, anything they can do, I can do better. Faster, too. Anyway, Take a seat when you're ready, and we can get started. I just need to make a few more adjustments. What's all this stuff for? 
This stuff, Desmond. Oh, this stuff is nothing special, really, this stuff. It's just the stuff that keeps our entire operation from falling apart, really. It requires a great deal of concentration to keep it all moving, so you'll forgive me if I don't have time to play meet and greet. Sean's in charge of maintaining our knowledge archives. It's like a digital library. He'll be riding shotgun with me while you're in the Animus. So if you come across anything of note, people, places, events, etc., he'll create database entries you can consult for additional information. Yeah, it's not just databases, though. I also provide tactical support for the other assassins. You know, Desmond, the ones who are out there, actually doing stuff, risking their lives, little things like that. Lucy, I've been seeing things. Symbols in my bedroom, the code on the keypad, just like Altair. It's from the bleeding effect. You're taking on more than your ancestors' memories. You're taking on their skills, too. In this case, Eagle Vision. Skills? You're more receptive now. So if all goes well, everything Ezio learns in the Animus, you'll learn too. You really think this will work? That I'll become an assassin? You already are an assassin. You'll just be better at it. Yeah, hopefully much better at it. I mean, seriously, I saw the tapes from Abstergo. You didn't even try and escape. What a dick. Sorry, Desmond. I've got some stuff to take care of. We can talk more later. How does this work? Of course. Deep breath. Ah! Oh, what are you, a tiny child? Sean! Well... Here we go. Insieme per la vittoria! Insieme! Insieme! Insieme. Ah, ah, Silenzio, ah, my friends! Silenzio! Grazie! Do you know what brings us here tonight? Honor! Viere de Pazzi slanders my family's name and forces his own miseries upon us. If we... Enough of your nonsense, Grullo! Yeah. We were just talking about you. I'm surprised to see you here. I thought the Patsy hired others to do their dirty work. It's oh, your family that cries for guards when there's trouble, Godardo. Afraid to handle things yourself? Your sister seemed quite satisfied with the handling I gave her earlier. Uccidetelo! <laughs> <laughs>
Behind you! Uh, Federico! What are you doing here? I wanted to see if baby brother had finally learned how to fight. Uh, and? <laughs> you have style. But endurance is what counts. Let's see how many of them you can ruin before they get the best of you. Hold on. What? What has won this? Your lip. Just a scratch. Let the doctor decide. It's not necessary. Besides, I've no money for this doctor of yours. <laughs> wasted it on women and wine, huh? I'd hardly call it wasted. Give me some floorings then. Or have you done the same? <laughs> <laughs> Search them. <laughs> There's bound to be something in my pockets. That should be enough. Let's get out of here before the guards arrive. Hurry, Ezio. The sooner we're done with the doctor, the sooner we can sleep. Here. 
Do you require a medical assistance? Ben trovato, doctor. Hmm. Fratelli auditori, why am I not surprised? You've made quite a mess of yourself, young man. It's nothing, really. You must help him. That pretty face is his only asset. Forty day. <laughs> There we are. Now get out of here. Grazie. This way. Quite a night. Indeed. I only wish they were all as much fun. Oh, wait. They are. <laughs> <laughs> we should head home, Ezio. Father's sure to be wondering where we've gone. Yes. I'd rather avoid a lecture. Up for a little race, then? To where? Uh, roof of that church. On the count of three. Uno, due, tre! <coughs> Baby brother still has much to learn. Come on, Tantaruga! Baby brother still has much to learn. Come on, Tartaruga. Come on then, this way. Where are you going? You'll see. It is a good life we lead, brother. <sighs> the best. May it never change. And may it never change us. All right. Enough of that. We really should head home. Let's go. Wait. What? Ezio, let Christina sleep. There will be time enough for that. Later. Ah. Uh. So it's Vieri. I'd better hide. Keep looking! He couldn't have gotten far! Funny clothes, 
Who's there? Me. Oh, it's you. I should have known. May I come in? Fine, but only for a minute. A minute is all I need. Indeed. Well, wait. Uh, that came out wrong. Come here. Oh, oh it's you. Christina! Christina! Celia! Your tutor will be here soon. Come, my daughter. Is it really so terrible that... Figlio d'un cane! What is this? Perdonate, messere! Chiedo venia! I'll kill you! No, no. That's not necessary. Guards! Guards! Voglio la sua testa! Now! There's really no need for violence. Oh, my God, try. You have me confused with someone else. Out of my way. She needed some help with some things. I'm mostly innocent. the mercenary, I suppose. There! On him! I the traditional remedies and the wisdom of the Arabes. <laughs> Will this await? He seems quite well armed, no? Depraved soul would pillage the day. I pressed God leeches today. 
I am taking orders for next year. I... Farewell and swift recovery, amigo. sponsorship inserts and a good rotation of food fetists ready to immortalize you. Assaggiate i miei saccati! Good morning, father. Come with me. Is something wrong? Do you think me blind and deaf, son? I know all about your fight with Vieri di Pazzi last night. And then, this little visit to Cristina. Your behavior is unacceptable. It... It... It reminds me of myself when I was your age. I assume these misadventures won't interfere with your work today. No, Padre. Avete la mia parola. I've prepared some documents here for Lorenzo di Medici to review. I need them delivered to him. With haste, Father. Return to me when it's done. Al magnifico Lorenzo di Medici, mio protettore e amico. I have done as requested and completed my investigation into the Milano incident. I can confirm for you that it extends far beyond the satisfaction with Duca Galeazzo Sforza's rule. It is my belief that other parties desirous of far greater gains manipulated events in such a way as to achieve their goals without being revealed themselves. Lampugnani, Olgiati, and Visconti are guilty of the crime to be sure. And they have met fitting ends for their betrayal. But several other noble families are implicated as well, our own Francesco di Pazzi among them. Their cause and motive is not yet clear to me, but initial findings indicate a plan, the scope of which is sure to disturb you. Best we continue this conversation in person, as I am hesitant to put my suspicion to paper. Reply with a place and time, and I will meet you there. I have also ordered Francesco be held by the Gonfalonieri until we can clear up this matter. Yours in confidence, Giovanni. Cavoli! Rape! Cipolle! E tutto! The nation What exactly prompted that outpouring of impertinence? Milano has nothing on me. I have the sharpest clothes of all. Listen well. I also have over... Every Renaissance community needed a blacksmith. Swords, locks, pans, knives, nails, and armor were all made from metal and all needed to be shaped. In addition architectural ironwork flourished during the Renaissance as blacksmiths began to apply their practical craft towards making art. Stock from my brother's forge at very attractive prices. Dagli a sta pugna! Il 
shall be held sometime after the execution. Ah, Ezio, ben trovato. How are you? Come sempre. I have a letter for Messer Lorenzo. I'll see that he receives it when he returns. Returns? They've gone to Villa Careggi, I'm afraid, and not expected back for at least another day. I'll let my father know. Only the height of fashion is on display in my shop. not be looking for trouble. Healing services for all the God's flock. Among Renaissance merchants, tailors belonged to the new middle class and were paid well for clothing the rich in the latest fashions. Many were able to get close to their wealthy clients due to the intimacy of their job, and create lasting ties. Careful with that lord! I should make you pay for that! Not worth the trouble. But I can only all. Here you can go. But hello, it's impossible. Perché? Ammirate questi prosciutti! Non, non pensa più quello che fa. Insomma, io che devo fare? Keep up the good work. Bischiero! <laughs> you worry too much, Giovanni. Francesco Di Pazzi is in prison. The threat is ended. Hello, son. You remember my friend Uberto? Good morning, Gonfaloniere Alberti. To you as well, young man. I trust you delivered the message. Si, sí, padre. But it seems Lorenzo is out of town. Hmm. I did not anticipate this. What does it matter? So you wait another day or two. Listen, your mother and sister have been looking for you. I'll need you again in a little while, but for now, see if you can't help them. Are you sure? Yes, now if you'll excuse us. 
Good to see you, Ezio. Date of birth, 1461, profession, student, noble. The third child of Giovanni and Maria Auditore, and the first girl in the family, Claudia seems to have been a bit of a spoiled brat. It looks like her parents had to raise her dowry by 1,000 florins after she scared away all her potential suitors. A report from her school indicates she once attacked another girl for looking at her boyfriend, and knocked her out cold. On the plus side, she's Etzeo's sister, so you should be safe. Hey Claudia, how are you? Bene. You shouldn't keep things from me. <sighs> it's Duccio. What of him? I think he's been unfaithful. Who told you this? The other girls. I thought they were my friends. Harpies. You're better off without them. I loved him. No, Claudia. You only thought you did. He should suffer for what he's done. Wait here. I'll go have a word with him. It's beautiful. Nothing but the best for you, amore mio. But what of Claudia? I thought you'd been promised to her. My father said I could do much better than an auditore. Ah, Virbante! Come, let us walk a bit. Walk? I had something <laughs> else in mind. Oh, Duccio. Mm. Lurido do porco! Ezio, my friend! Ah! Ma che ti piglia! You insult my sister, parading around with his puttana. W what are you talking about? I saw the gift you gave her, or the things you said. Maybe your sister shouldn't be so stingy with her virtu. You broke her heart. Ha! <laughs> and now I'm going to break your face. You auditores all talk me, but when it comes time for action, Ha! You'll regret ever opening your mouth. I could have taught your sister a great many things. She bastardo! Basta, coyone! Bye, bye! Basta! Mi arrendo! Bye, bye! Stay away from my sister! Oh, basta! Che diavolo! Is there a point to this? Shame on you! You pieces of shit! Napoli! Not you! There! There! Oh, Tronzi! Tronzi! Oh, basta!
doing out here, Petruccio? You should be in bed. I want those feathers. What for? It's a secret. If I get them for you, will you go back inside? Yes, I promise. That should heal quick. Here, as promised. Grazie, brother. You still haven't told me why you want these. I will, in time. Buongiorno, Ezio. Buongiorno a voi, madre. Come state? Sto bene. And you? Still recovering from last night? I have no idea what you're talking about. Of course not. Anyway, I have an errand to run. I'd like you to join me. Con piacere. Come. It's not far from here. I know about your fight with Vieri. What fight? Per piacere. Let's not play this game. He spoke ill of us. I could not allow him to continue. I'm sure he's having a hard time dealing with the accusations against his father. Francesco di Pazzi is many things, and none of them good. But even I never suspected he'd be capable of murder. What will happen to him? I imagine there will be a trial. Will father speak at it? He'll have to. He's the one with the evidence. Still, I wish there was another way. 
You've nothing to fear. Everyone wants justice done. It is an unfortunate state of affairs, but it will pass. With the advent of double entry bookkeeping, which allowed bankers to keep track of their clients' deposits and withdrawals, and the proliferation of many different types of Italian currency into the pool of circulation, banks became an essential part of everyday Renaissance life. Banks technically couldn't make money on their money, because the Catholic Church forbade the charging of interest, but in practice this restriction wasn't followed by bankers, or even by the Vatican which participated in the banking system and required banks to pay the Pope gifts in proportion to the amount of money he had deposited with them. As long as it isn't called interest, God won't notice right? Here we are! Hello, Leonardo. Madonna Maria! This is my son, Ezio. Molto onorato. L'onore è mio. Let me go and fetch the paintings. I'll be right back. He's very talented. Imagino. Self-expression is vital to understanding and enjoying life. You should find an outlet. I have plenty of outlets. I meant besides vaginas. Mother. Back to your house then. Si, si. Ezio, help Leonardo, will you? So Ezio, what do you do? He's been working for his father. Ah, you're to be a banker. For now. And you, aren't, was it? Truth be told, it's been difficult for me to settle. Painting is nice, but I often feel like my work lacks, I don't know, a purpose. Does that make sense? I'd rather contribute more practically, more directly. Architecture, perhaps, or anatomy. I'm not content merely to capture the world. I want to change it. Oh, Leonardo. I have no doubt you'll go on to do great things. Vi ringrazio, Madonna. That's kind of you. Thank you for your help, son. Don't let me keep you from your other duties. It was nice to meet you, Ezio. I hope our paths cross again. Anch'io. Date of birth, 1452. Profession, painter, inventor, designer, architect, scientist, engineer. The illegitimate son of a notary and a peasant woman, Leonardo da Vinci was raised in Tuscany. Like many destined to be superstars, he had no surname, Vinci being the town in which he was born. At age 14 he was apprenticed to a Florentine painter Verrocchio, who taught him chemistry drafting painting sculpting and modeling. When he was 20 Leonardo established his own workshop and then traveled across Italy, eventually painting his great masterpieces The Last Supper in 1498 and The Mona Lisa in 1503-7. During his travels, Leonardo studied the world with unquenchable curiosity, recording his observations in mirror writing within his notebooks. He created designs for a helicopter tank solar power and a calculator, among others. He was also an engineer, designing garrisons cannons and movable barricades, Despite this epic list of accomplishments, Leonardo was hounded by his patrons for his chronic procrastination. Pieces frequently took years longer than he anticipated and many were never finished at all. Leonardo also had a tumultuous love life. Accused of sodomy in 1476, he was most likely homosexual. Sly his assistant, was accused of stealing and spending too much money on clothes but was also probably Leonardo's lover. 
Leonardo painted several pictures of Salai, including his famous Saint John the Baptist, and left the Mona Lisa to him when he died in 1519. Date of birth, 1436, profession, banker, advisor, noble. Giovanni Auditore was one of the pivotal figures in 15th century Florentine banking. In charge of overseeing the Medici bank branches across Italy, he kept the Medici machine running while Lorenzo was busy with the government. Extending his reach out into the international operation, it was Giovanni who first noticed the problems with the Lion Bank, causing him to alert Francesco Sassetti, which saved the branch. Such great talent was well rewarded by Il Magnifico. Giovanni developed a close friendship with Lorenzo de' Medici, becoming one of his closest advisors. Successful negotiations to secure the Pope's support of the Medici Bank in 1471 were carried out by Giovanni. Relieved and grateful, Lorenzo paid for Giovanni's palazzo, as a gift. One of Italy's largest churches and the largest landmark in Florence, Santa Maria del Fiore is considered by many to be the first masterpiece of Renaissance architecture. Although the church was designed by Arnolfo di Cambio in 1296, the dome was not started until the beginning of the 15th century. With Cambio long dead, none of the architects at that time had any idea how to construct such an enormous structure, since the use of buttresses was forbidden in Florence and mortar took several days to set. But all was not lost. In an amazing comeback story, Filippo Brunelleschi, an architect who had been defeated in an earlier bid to design the baptistry doors, won the competition to build the dome. He beat out Lorenzo Ghiberti, the same artist he had lost to before. Brunelleschi invented machines to hoist the bricks needed for the dome up to the workers and was able to construct the entire dome without using centering, a support structure to hold the dome in place while bricks were laid. Containing over 4 million bricks, the dome was completed in 1436. The lantern was added after Brunelleschi's death in 1446, and supposedly contains holy relics. However, there were several rumors that in fact an entire tomb of unknown origin is located inside. Date of birth, 1463, profession, student, noble. The youngest of the Auditore children, Petruccio was described as having a weak constitution by Giovanni Auditore in a letter to Lorenzo de' Medici soon after the boy's birth. Apparently, he didn't improve with time. Petruccio was pulled from school due to illness when he was 12 and according to records from the family doctor was confined to bed. No other data exists after that, so it is probable that he eventually succumbed to his illness. Date of birth, 1432, profession, writer, noble. I grow tired of these walls that surround me and am bored with safety. Now, is the time to make a decision, I will go out there and see what my life may truly be. Maria wrote those words when she was 16, a week before she met Giovanni Auditore. Born into a powerful banking family, the Mozzi, Maria is one of the most famous historical sources of the time period due to her multi-volume diary, which has been translated by several notable scholars and is on display in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. With funding from her parents, Maria opened up a bakery in the courtyard of her family palazzo, which she transformed into an artistic gathering place. It was there that she met a man with such conviction I found myself rooted to the spot, unable to look anywhere else. That man was Giovanni Auditore. Maria and Giovanni were married in 1450. Maria's diary entries continue for the next few decades, describing her patronage of several up-and-coming artists and her trials as a mother, at which point she abruptly abandons her writing, to the disappointment of historians everywhere. The shops of Renaissance artists were usually small, and dealt mainly in religious decorations for churches or homes. Artists were not considered visionaries as they are today, but were treated merely as craftsmen, just like carpenters and blacksmiths. The production of art was usually cooperative. The head of the shop was the master, who received commissions and oversaw the assembly of the painting. He was expected to be a businessman and turn a profit, usually creating copies of whatever religious paintings were in vogue at the time. Diagrams of the human body and the printing press influenced Renaissance medicine greatly, which had in turn been influenced by Arabic medicine during the Middle Ages. By the 15th century, 
science had already begun its slow climb toward becoming more relevant than spirituality in the field of healthcare. However, many people stubbornly clung to old ways, visiting local mystics instead of doctors. After the plague ravaged Europe in 1350, many doctors dressed in special plague gear to treat patients. To prevent contamination, they wore a cape coated in wax, and a primitive gas mask in the shape of a beak. Date of birth, 1459, profession, student, noble. Cristina Vespucci was a well-known Florentine beauty and a favorite of painters, most notably Botticelli, who used her as a model for several of his paintings. Records kept by her father's guards indicate Ezio visited her frequently and that he was unbelievably dexterous, as the guards were never able to catch him trespassing. In addition to her looks, Cristina also seems to have been somewhat responsible for jump-starting the career of her cousin, the namesake of a rather famous landmass. At a dinner party attended by Cristina and among other illustrious guests Lorenzo de' Medici, she was reputed to have been in conversation with Lorenzo and Manfredo Soderini about her cousin's brilliance as a sailor. Well apparently she exaggerated his importance slightly to impress Lorenzo, and Lorenzo, charmed by her beauty, agreed to hire him. Try Mara go out. I bet after several years you'll name your shipping company after him she is reported to have joked. Biggest understatement of the century. Date of birth, 1456, profession, student, noble. Ezio's older brother and the eldest Audi Torre, Federico entered the Medici bank as a clerk when he was 19. However, the bank logs indicate he mostly dicked around rather than actually working. One entry goes into detail. On September 17, 1475, a bag of gold florins went missing, after panic struck the bank. The elder Auditore approached Francesco Sassetti, and with a smile revealed the location of the bag, which had been hidden on the rooftop. If he weren't the son of Giovanni Auditore, I'd speak to Lorenzo de' Medici and have him put in the stocks. Unsurprisingly, Federico was removed from the bank's payroll shortly after his 20th birthday. Date of birth, 1459, profession, student, noble. In a diary entry from 1474, Maria Auditore one of the great Florentine chroniclers and Ezio's mother, describes her son as competitive, stubborn and loud-mouthed, but so passionate that it is impossible to fault him for anything. Complaints to the city guard by several noble patricians seem to suggest he was also something of a womanizer. Tutored by the great banker Giovanni Tornabuoni, Ezio's school records cease around age 17, at which point his name is connected with some terrible crime. It is impossible to discern what it could be from the records, there's very little here, but afterward Ezio drops out of history entirely, as if he never existed. Completed in 1473, the Palazzo Auditore is notable for its rusticated stonework and Roman pilasters. Giovanni Auditore designed the Palazzo himself, based on initial sketches by Leone Battista Alberti. Once built, the Palazzo became a fixture of the Santa Maria Novella district. Lorenzo de' Medici mentioned in a letter addressed to Giovanni dated 1474, that he admired the facade's lack of ostentation. Built by a distant great-great-uncle of the famous Amerigo Vespucci in 1350, the relatively unpresumptuous Vespucci residence is notable for displaying the first painted façade in Florence, a style that was later done to death in the Il Trarno district. Constructed over an existing church in 1258, Santa Trinita, Holy Trinity, is known for its Sassetti Chapel, which is decorated with frescoes of the life of St. Francis by Domenico Ghirlandaio, a painter most famous for his brief role as one of Michelangelo's teachers. Santa Trinita was the mother church of the Vallambrosan Order of Monks, a very serious group that strictly enforced both poverty and silence, for life. Despite the beauty of the Santa Trinita frescoes, very few Vallambrosan monks are likely to have seen them, on account of the fact that the monks received beatings for going outside their monasteries. Founded by Julius Caesar in 59 BCE, Florentia as it was called by the Romans, quickly became a center of commerce. After the sacking of Rome in the 5th century, the Ostrogoths took over. Under their rule the city was constantly under attack from the Byzantines, who sent the population level below 1000. The Lombards came to power in the 6th century, ending the Byzantine assaults. Florence grew to a population of 80,000 in the 14th century, of which 25,000 were working in the wool industry. 
In 1378, a major revolt of the lower class led to the Wolkomers rising up and seizing the government of the city. Their progressive radical democracy lasted for less than two months before the upper classes seized control once more. But the revolt so terrified the rich that a century later it was still discussed in hushed tones, much as the 1960s hippie movement is today. The Albizzi family became the de facto rulers after the revolt. Worried about the rise of the Medici family, who were newly rich bankers rapidly gaining influence in Florence, Maso and Rinaldo Albizzi imprisoned Cosimo de' Medici and exiled him in 1433. But Cosimo gained influence behind the scenes, and rose to power in 1434, exiling the entire Albizzi family except for Luca, who had been loyal to Cosimo. Luca Albizzi joined the Signoria the ruling body of Florence, as Gonfalonier, succeeding Cosimo's old friend Ilario Auditori in 1442. Under the Medici family, which built impressive public buildings and supported such luminaries as Michelangelo, Leonardo, and Botticelli, the Renaissance began with Florence securely at its center. Oh, 